Um, thank yes. You. I, can you hear me? I, I can't hear you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I'm here. I was having trouble with my computer. Okay. So well, we, got, we got you. And we're all having like, trouble with computers today, apparently. Yeah. Here's, and I know it's mine. Is Pam and Pam and Mark there? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. So I have 4.42 p.m. on uh, uh, October 14th. I call this Board of Health meeting to order. Uh, thank you all for coming in. And I will start by reading the waiver, suggested statement. Uh, and this meeting is being recorded. I see that it is, and I know that Jack also records, and so uh, I will note that too. Is anyone else recording this meeting? Hearing no, it's, we just have two recordings being made. Uh, first went to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, general law, chapter 30A, section 18 and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strip limitations on a number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Town of Adams Board of Health is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings provided for in the order. Attending remotely are members Dr. Peter Hoyt and Dr. Laura Grandchamp and myself, Dr. David Rhodes. Um, uh, attending from Town Hall, I believe, our administrative assistant, Pam uh, Jerry, and Mark Blaisdell, Code Enforcement Officer. We have posted today's agenda, which included the call-in information for today's meeting. Despite our e best efforts, if we are not able to provide for real-time access for the public to participate in today's meeting, a recording of this meeting will be made available. As we are participating remotely, please note that all votes taken during the meeting will be by roll call. Uh, I will state the member's name and ask for their vote. Um, and I believe that is it on that. So the first order of business is minutes. And there was some confusion about whether the August 19th minutes were approved by us. I do not remember it. And I had, I have two changes to them. Uh, Pete, Laura, thoughts? Um, those were the ones that were just emailed to us? Uh, I think Pam emailed uh, the ones in September the 16th and 30th. Okay. And uh, the the August 19th are already posted on the website as approved and submitted. But as I said, I don't remember voting on them um, because I found two uh, glitches that I, I thought should be addressed. Um. Yeah, I'm thinking that the ones that were just sent to us were August 19th. Well, I, I, I reset August 19th. I sent the draft uh, that Pam sent to us, I believe, okay. uh, September 29th, which is probably why we didn't get to it. Okay. Yeah, so I, I agree. I don't think that we voted on those. Okay, it's a good. Then uh, do... Have either of you reviewed the ones from August 19? Yes. Uh, comments? Yeah, I do. Uh, so, do you have anything, Pete? No. Uh, Laura? Okay, so. Oh, no. I am looking at DJ Wilson's testimony on page four. Um, I think that was where my questions started. Uh, 
his next, the ne next to the last sentence is very confusing. Uh, he told them that they would like to see a limited number of locations be allowed to sell tobacco within the existing tobacco retailers. He stated that this will benefit sales of tobacco to underage buyers, which kind of sounds very confusing to me. I would like to have that amended to read. DJ noted that capping limits the number of retailers within a community with the goal of reducing access of tobacco products to underage individuals. Current vendors would not be affected with two positive results. One, current vendors would not face additional competition and two, the threat of losing one's license would uh, be uh, strong, would strongly encourage compliance. Does that ring a bell with either of you? Um, sorry, I was just looking for the copy of it, but yeah, I think that, uh, that, uh, and that then the, guys, you know, I, I think it's more along the lines of what he was, the message he was getting across. Right. Okay, good. Um, and I'd be happy to send this language to Pam after the meeting. The second here is the last statement from Rick Blanchard, which it, it says he stated that the tobacco ban would only benefit growth in the sales of tobacco, uh, which I think was actually smushing together a uh, couple of sentences that he said. I would like to change that last sentence to Rick stated that the only thing the ban would do is to, quote, curb growth. I, li I actually listened to the YouTube, so that is what he said. Yeah, I, I'm fine with that. If you, you know, if you went back and listened to it, that, that's good with me. And then the last is just a, a little me being obsessive. Uh, there's a, the last page is blank. And so the carriage return should be deleted or whatever. Uh, so there's not a blank page at the end. I hate to have blank pages at the end. Uh, uh, so uh, with, with those changes, do I have a motion to accept the August 19th meeting minutes as amended? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, Pete, what do you say? Yes. Laura? Laura, what's your vote? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay, good. And Dave, I vote yes. Uh, the meeting minutes are uh, unanimously accepted. As I said, I will send uh, those text uh, statements to you, Pam. Okay, moving on to the other two that are before us. The 19th, uh, I also had a couple changes on this. Uh, uh, Pete, Laura, you first. You mean this? Go ahead, Laura. I just want to clarify, you mean this the September sixteenth, is that your Yes, it's a, yeah, nine sixteen. Yes. I actually have a bunch on this one. Right, well then let me go on here. So I'm looking at page two under administrative issues. Uh, sentence that starts with Chairman Rhodes stated and going down to the fourth line is written advising them that an individual could come forward this is on the open meeting of law violation so it, it should be advising him because Attorney St. John as far as I know only spoke to me uh, whether he spoke to you or not I have no uh, and so I'm sure I said that uh, he was advising me 
singly to uh, um, that a person might come. And, and instead of suggesting, I would like to change that word to claiming that the board violated open meeting law rather than suggesting, because I think he used a stronger word. Um, and, uh, and then the next sentence, Attorney St. John directed the board to repeat. Again, uh, the communication I had was with him. So as I was explaining the background here, uh, uh, I would like to change that to had requested that Chairman Rhodes repeat the public hearing at this evening's meeting. Is that specifically what he requested via email to me? And then on the word speculation, uh, the minutes only say that uh, I couldn't make a decision based on speculation. I actually said a little bit more than that. Uh, and the possibility that one person might come forward to cha challenge the validity of the 819 meeting under open meeting law, you know, with the, obviously the, the, the uh, emphasis on possibility because it was not a reality. Uh, going down to the two paragraphs below, uh, Laura, what Laura said, uh, the word should be enforceability, not forcibility. Then going down two more paragraphs, uh, It's kind of a confusing couple sentences there, but I think I can probably just leave that. Uh, but on the last line of that page, stated that I was unsure of making certain decisions, and I, I would actually like to change that to reluctant to make certain decisions. So I think I, it was a little bit stronger than unsure. Um, The next point I have is kind of arcane. So I was a discussion that attorney St. John and I had, which he disagreed with me and, and thus I disagreed with him. I will leave it just vague. Um, and I am going down to the beginning of page five, that first paragraph where Mark is talking about flu. Uh, the one, two, I think it's the third full sentence. He stated that our local pharmacy holds flu clinics in the surrounding community at this time. Um, maybe the words surrounding should be deleted. So it just says flu clinics in the community. Does that make sense? Because if, if you say surrounding community, you're thinking of Cheshire and that. So I would just delete the word surrounding. And uh, the next is just a missing apostrophe. I'll ignore that. Um, any objections to those changes? Uh, hearing none, I will ask for a motion to accept the September 16th meeting minutes as amended. Uh, so moved. Second. Uh, I assume Laura is saying, uh, and uh, uh, any further discussion? Pete, how do you vote? Yes. Laura? Yes. Uh, and Dave, yes. Uh, the minutes as amended are approved unanimously. Again, I will send 
my corrections to Pam. And we now move on to the last, sorry, this is so painful. Um, the, and I don't have many changes on the September 30th. Uh, Pete and Laura, do you have any changes? No. So I'm looking at page three, again, DJ Wilson's testimony. Uh, second line, uh, licenses than tobacco vendors. So licenses is misspelled and uh, then should be than, T-H-A-N. Um, on the next, you know, following along that sentence, he stated that many cities and towns have access to tobacco for the one, uh, for the young. Uh, so I think what DJ was saying that many cities and towns have uh, much ac access to tobacco for the young and capping would therefore be a uh, slow but positive implementation for promoting good health. So again, instead of assess, uh, towns have uh, much access to tobacco. Uh, and then finally, um, when we were talking with Ms. Foster about meeting minutes, uh, the last sentence there, Chairman Rhodes stated that he would look into the matter. And I just would like to add that uh, Vice Chairman Hoyt reiterated his point that we are short staffed, making it challenging to provide timely availability of the minutes. And as an aside, I welcome Pam back. Thank you for being here. Uh, so if I add that sentence, would that be okay with you guys? All right, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So moved. Uh, well, uh, second. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think I think your microphone is somehow. I hear the second half of your yes. Uh, Dave also says yes. Um, the the uh, uh, minutes are approved as amended uh, unanimously. Uh, and again, thank you. I, I, I just want to add thank you, Pam, uh, for you know taking this up. It looks like a uh, Herculean task and. Uh, uh, Welcome back. Um, so the next item is public comment. Is there anyone who wishes uh, open the floor for uh, open the floor for public comment? Uh, hearing none, uh, I will close the public comment period. Uh, we do not have a hearing scheduled, so move on to. Uh, code enforcement officers update. Uh, uh, oh, I see uh, Town Administrator Green has joined us. Uh, welcome. Thank you, uh, everybody. So do we have uh, from, uh, so Mark, were you able to put together a, um, a report on the current status of open cases, closed cases, as you did uh, early on in your tenure with us? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, would we be able to have something like that at our next meeting in presumably November? We'll see how activities go. Okay, thank you. Um, and moving on to old business. Uh, COVID update, um, things, I don't like to jinx things, but they look fairly <laughs> rosy here. <laughs> um, I listened to Dan Doyle's uh, uh, actually very short presentation starting at three today. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we are actually doing, you know, 
fairly well, particularly compared to the rest of the state, which is doing awful. Um, and that, uh, um, so basically, uh, the message is don't let down your guard. We're doing well because we are taking care of ourselves. And uh, I, I think that's it. Uh, do either of you have anything to add or mark? No, nothing to add. Because uh, we can talk a little bit more about this uh, with the Halloween coming up. Uh, <laughs> I think that's it is definitely relevant there. Uh, school reopenings. Uh, last week, I joined um, a, a Zoom conference, uh, health forum conference with Bart. Uh, I thus uh, uh, virtually met uh, uh, this uh, executive director uh, Jay White, um, and it, I was uh, a very uh, uplifted by uh, all the efforts. Uh, Dan Doyle also participated in that call and it looks looks to me like uh, they were taking the situation very seriously, doing everything they could uh, to prevent the spread as they uh, open BART. Um, I would ask Mark, do we have uh, any more information on the other schools in town? Beyond what was already reported? Well, what was reported? Okay, well, um, Adams Cheshire Regional School District, um, they're going to have one. We're going to have one uh, here in Town Hall for town employees and their families. And, and of course, uh, CHP has been over at the, uh, the Adams Market uh, parking lot. Well, that's, that's the flu. That's the flu. That's flu. I was asking about the school reopenings, um, students coming back to school and measures that they have instituted. You know, I, I haven't seen any of the school reopening plans, uh, but, uh, you know, Mike Perot, the infectious disease uh, uh, specialist or whatever at, uh, at the Berkshire Health Systems has reviewed Barts, and that's that's the only review of uh, reopening plans that I specifically know of. Last last meeting, I think you said that uh, the plans were in flux. So I was just I basically just asking, as anyone looked at the plans and reviewed them, and there, yeah, there has nothing new has come into this office. Okay. Well, thank you. I will just leave that at that. So anything more on that item of old business? All right, moving on to new business. I think Mark already uh, started on this, the uh, flu clinics. And so he noted uh, uh, CHP and uh, what was the other entity uh, offering flu clinics? Uh, flu clinics. The Adams Cheshire Regional School District. And and so that is also available to adults because uh, the school systems generally were targeting uh, 18 and under uh, and possibly staff, but are uh, adults able to drive through and get flu shots there or do they have to go to their pharmacy or physician's office. So my understanding is that that will be open to the students and staff. Um, and uh, if, if it's going to be open to the public, then there can't be any restrictions. Correct, correct. So, but, so but primarily the students and staff. Right, but it, and the and the schools do have sufficient vaccine because that was one of the issues that was that's that's through the public health nurse out of Cheshire. Okay, Cheshire public health nurse. Oh, I'm sorry, the uh, the school nurse. 
is coordinating with the, uh, the public health nurse with Cheshire for that to happen. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, and thank you for keeping on top of that. Um, uh, the next item of new business is uh, the Halloween plans uh, with Adams. And uh, I participated in the Board of Selectmen meeting last week where Chief Bacon outlined his plans. Uh, I was uh, uh, thrilled to hear that uh, very robust uh, plans because as you know, uh, having kids trick or treat is, is a high risk behavior. Uh, and Chief Bacon has designed with the help of, uh, make sure I get all the players here, uh, the fire district, uh, uh, the, and of course the police department, DPW and the fire wardens um, have all collaborated in making a plan to drive around town and pass out bags of candy with the um, uh, children dressing up uh, and and uh, and so there would be uh, town workers and so forth with with, with uh, gloved hands and out candy wearing masks of course uh, so that uh, all the kids would be able to get their bags of candy uh, uh, I said I would bring it to the uh, Board of Health so that we could review it have any thoughts but basically you know for my money uh, I think it's it's a great plan. Uh, if we don't want kids to trick or treat, I'll mention that shortly. Uh, this is a super super uh, alternative. Uh, any any thoughts? <laughs> well, hearing none, may. I have a motion to uh, commend uh, Chief Bacon and the uh, other members of the town in uh, this uh, great plan to provide uh, uh, Adam's children with uh, a, a, a substitute Halloween. Yeah, so I, I move to approve the uh, plan outlined by Chief Bacon. Second. Uh, any Further discussion? Um, I guess I, I could go a little bit further by saying that uh, uh, Chief Bacon wanted to make sure that all, all children uh, will be uh, uh, taken care of. Um, the hours are 5.30 to 7 on Halloween. Uh, they are accepting candy um, as long as it's factory packed uh, as well as uh, accepting cash donations to buy the uh, candy. All the candy will be uh, prepared uh, safely. And uh, uh, the town employees will be driving up and down streets several times to make sure they, uh, with loudspeakers, to make sure everyone is is captured. Um, and so uh, as, as uh, Chief Bacon said, Keep your window cracked so you can hear us coming. So, uh, may I take this to a vote, uh, Pete? Yes. Uh, Laura? Yes. And Dave? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chief Bacon. Thank you, uh, Christine. Thank you, Jay. Uh, thank you, Mark, who was also involved in the plan, uh, as well as the other members who aren't here. Um, I would just like to go on a little bit and and make recommendations that basically have been floated around the uh, county. As I said, uh, trick or treating is a high risk behavior, so there are I think you know three things uh, I would uh, like to say. Uh, first, I would strongly uh, discourage large parties, particularly indoors. Uh, secondly, I would strongly discourage uh, trick-or-treating, house-to-house um, -house trick or treating, uh, going up to someone's house or uh, private individuals handing candy out their door. And thirdly, 
I would strongly discourage uh, going to other municipalities because these uh, we need to respect their different protocols for dealing with Halloween, as well as you know, we our our protocols are built to protect us, and we don't want our kids wandering out, uh, potentially uh, getting putting themselves at risk by going to other communities. Um, I would actually like to make a little sign for that, maybe put it up on the cable news so that, uh, uh, and then finally, um, I noticed, uh, Jay, I noticed on the town website, there's not a uh, anything about the Halloween plan. Are you all uh, planning to post uh, the Halloween plan on the website? Yeah, we can certainly do that, Dr. Rhodes. I think we were just waiting to be sure that the board didn't have any other input to modify anything. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, if you need any help, please reach out to me. I'd be you know, happy to help put together uh, something that's you know, succinct but complete. And uh, again, um, uh, super thanks for all you're doing. Well, thank you, folks, and, and thanks for the input. Thanks to Mark uh, for everything. Uh, I think it's important just to kind of put my former health official hat on myself is, you know, it isn't just um, attempting to prohibit gatherings and to attempt uh, to prohibit the vector of the virus transmission from trick-or-treaters, but, you know, we're a good community. We have a good-natured community, and there's folks out there of a particular demographic and an age that are susceptible uh, to COVID-19, and we also don't want to put them in, in a position where they feel compelled out of the goodness of their heart to turn on their porch light and allow folks to come to the, the door and to give out candy. So this gives those folks who may not have kids at home, who may be of a susceptible demographic, to know that it's okay. Uh, we understand uh, your concerns uh, about this virus. We've been living with it now for six or seven months. We understand that. And uh, that's why we on the town side are, are gonna do this. It, it takes the burden off of people feeling they, they really need to put that light on and hand out that candy. We'll do it for you. And it also eliminates that, that possibility of door-to-door -door transmission. So that's, that's generally um, why we're doing this. And I appreciate everyone's help and, and support. And Dr. Rhodes, your time uh, last week with the selectmen reviewing it, uh, it's been a really good team effort. And I think when we work this way here in our community, we, we really are able to do good. So thanks a million to everybody out there. Well, thank you too. So great. Looking forward <laughs> two weeks from now. Uh, uh, I have no further business other than I did float last night. Uh, we did talk at our last meeting, I believe, uh, uh, updating the fee schedule. And I, uh, I floated actually a version of the fee schedule, which is not, it doesn't have everything on it but it has more on than what we have on our website. And so I would uh, basically like, particularly Mark, uh, Pam and me, uh, and, but uh, Pete and Laura also look, look at the list and uh, we can discuss it at, at our next meeting because I wanna, uh, we need to make it conform with what the actual practice is. Um, so other than that, uh, does anybody else have anything else to add or say? No. Um, next meeting, shall we do four weeks from now? Uh, it's actually Veterans Day. Or wait until the following week. Uh, if we if we meet on the twelfth, put back the meeting time. Um, or if we go out another week, I can probably do it at four. So the eighteenth. Otherwise, I'm going to need to push it back to four thirty. Okay, that'd be. Uh, I was surprised last <laughs> five years ago. Uh, the 11th fell on a Wednesday and I drove up with my trash to the uh, transfer station and <laughs> the gate was closed. <laughs> so I warned anybody, I, I assume uh, the town transfer station will be closed on Wednesday. 
uh, November 11th. But let's plan to meet the 18th uh, at 4 p.m. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? No move. Second. Second. Uh, Second. Uh, Pete, what yes. say you? Yes. Laura? Yes. And Dave says yes. yes. Uh, so unanimously adjourned at 5.17 p.m. here on October 14th. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>